Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. There could possibly be some great news concerning GPU prices, at least according to a report from Trendforce, which alleges that due to lower demand for things such as memory for graphics cards, prices are set to trend downwards. But yeah, doing a little bit of digging into this, and honestly, the truth, as always, is a little more complicated. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about missing customization options, but there's also that annoying desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by BobKeys.com, and they offer excellent prices on Windows 10 professional and home keys, as well as games. I bought a key last year with Bob Keys on my own personal account, and most recently I've bought yet another in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of these keys for 25% off by using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, check out bobkeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off of the listed Windows 10 key prices. So we all know the story by now. The prices of graphics cards have been absolutely ridiculous, although slowly we are starting to see MSRPs become closer to normal, thanks to numerous reasons, including, of course, the uh, well cracking down of mining being one of the primary drivers. Not to mention the shift now from work from home back to kind of a more normalized environment, although, it, of course, it does depend on the part of the world you're from. But ultimately, prices of cards are still kind of ridiculous. For example, we have the 6700 XT here, which you can see is the lowest price in over 30 days. Um, it's slightly over MSRP, just slightly over 300 US dollars, for example. Although prices are kind of very much region dependent at the moment. So for example, one region, Nvidia could be cheaper, another region, AMD could be cheaper. But yeah, GDDR6 memory is used in a ton of different things, not least of which are consoles. But according to Trendforce, we're starting to see the downward trend in price for the memory. However, honestly, I don't think that we should get ready to celebrate yet. Now, I don't want to give you guys doom and gloom because I do feel optimistic in the longer term. But at the end of the day, things are very volatile right now, especially given Sony and Microsoft, for example, want to ramp up production of their various systems. And obviously, at the end of the day, those systems sell in very high volume. So there's a very interesting tweet, actually, from Albert. I'll link his uh, Twitter account in the uh, video description. And he mentions that about 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory is costing around 240 US dollars. This is from DigiKey. Now, of course, the different companies will manage to wrangle different deals with different companies and memory vendors, and it will also depend on the speed of the memory and a ton of other different factors. From my own digging, around 10 to 12 bucks per gigabyte seems kind of standard at the moment. But again, it goes back to the fact that memory is just so darn volatile. And also, let's assume even that you're looking at 10 bucks per gigabyte, so let's say eight gigabytes total. If we do very complicated Einstein level maths, then we're looking at around 80 US dollars. However, do bear in mind that graphics cards are not just, well, memory. While uh, large frame buffers are important, we also need to take into consideration a ton of other things, not least of which the PCB, the power regulation across the board, the actual, well, you know, die itself. And to that end, we've recently seen um, Samsung as well as TSMC, I think Samsung were a little later, uh, increasing the price of their fabs. And ultimately, this is going to, well, be something that we need to be mindful of, especially as we move into the next generation. There's a very interesting series of tweets from both Grayman and uh, Kobe D7 Kimmy, where they were discussing the fact that Narve 33, while they're very optimistic about the performance of the GPU, they don't believe it's going to be particularly cheap. In fact, they're kind of concerned about it. And again, just I don't want to go over the performance targets too much as we've discussed them so much recently, but it's around 50% faster, allegedly, than the 6900 XT. So <laughs> that's a very fast card, even if it does launch Q4 next year. I mean, just thinking about it logically, 
I don't, I, you know, I'm kind of with Copa D7 that I don't think this card is exactly what you could consider, you know, mid-range. In fact, and this is just speculative, uh, you know, on my part, but I wonder if we're going to see almost like Narve 34 high-end dies be like, you know, the new low to mid-range and then... I guess we could have almost like an entire new product here with Narve 31, the fully enabled SKUs and Narve 32 could be almost like kind of the high end now. And pricing I'm hearing is going to be really expensive. Ultimately, with technology like FSR and NVIDIA's DLSS, this is obviously a positive. And if you are driving a 1440p display, even at 144 hertz or what have you, one of these GPUs is most likely going to be more than sufficient, although it will be very interesting to see how ray tracing kind of takes hold. Yeah, um, I, I do think that we're going to see positive trends in the industry for pricing, but I just think that articles and kind of, you know, I, I, I just, I, I don't want you guys to kind of think that we're out of the woods yet. Things are still going to be very volatile, in my opinion. And we're going to see the prices go absolutely ballistic, at least in my personal opinion, over the next several months. I think that once Intel and other players start to really get involved in the industry, and I know I've said this many times now, I think it might help a little bit. But, yeah, um, just looking at what we're hearing about Lovelace, the size of the die the you know technology that we're going to be seeing this thing i think it's going to be pretty expensive and it'll be very interesting to me too to see how this evolves onto the mobile especially given what we're hearing about the heat output and power consumption of some of these high-end SKUs. i wonder how we're going to see these products differentiated between um, desktop and mobile segments i'm going to throw in a couple of quickies the first of which is probably an intel DG2 GPU for desktop. Now it could also be a mobile part, but the clock frequency here is actually pretty high. It's running at 2.2 gigahertz, although it's only 128 execution units, which is nowhere near the fully kitted out part, which is allegedly, or what I'm hearing anyway, 512 execution units. So this is obviously one of the lower end SKUs. And you know, Intel here hitting 2.2 gigahertz is actually pretty impressive. And I think that while the benchmark itself isn't particularly meaningful in terms of, well, anything in terms of performance, because ultimately, well, Geekbench is not necessarily the best benchmark for performance in games anyway, but it does give us an indication that Intel are getting closer and closer and closer to the final product itself. And that actually kind of matches up to what we've been hearing with a CES launch of this thing. Now, again, I was hearing it was gonna be Q4, although interestingly, I was told that was gonna be for the mobile part. So it's very interesting whether we're gonna see the mobile launch in Q4 and then desktop maybe later on, or whether this is actually a mobile part for desktop and Intel are just like, yeah, we're going to just be cranking this thing up to the stratosphere in terms of raw clock frequency. I think, honestly, Intel releasing this is going to be a lot more of a concern to NVIDIA in the grand scheme of things in the mobile market, simply because the i plus i, you know, Intel and Intel graphics and Intel CPU and AMD, obviously, well, yeah, it's AMD. And NVIDIA... I don't think they're in trouble or anything like that, but I'm hearing that Jensen is basically going to do anything he can to get the ARM acquisition to go forward. Now, ultimately, he doesn't have final say in things. However, he can help sweeten the deal. But as we all know, there's been a ton of red tape recently, in more ways than one, that NVIDIA have been dealing with with the ARM deal. And I've kind of gone over this more extensively in a recent video. I really don't know how I feel about the NVIDIA ARM acquisition. I know to many people it's not great in terms of anti-competitiveness, and I do grant you that this is true. However, there is also a part of me that kind of wants to see what maybe would be a great alternative to just x86. And yeah, I mean, I'm hearing a lot of very interesting murmurs about Zen 5 and uh, what Intel have got in the future. Maybe I'll put out a video on them. I'm not too sure yet because the rumors are kind of wishy-washy. But too long didn't read. Both AMD and uh, Intel are rather concerned, to my knowledge anyway, of what we're seeing from the likes of Apple. In terms of energy efficiency and a whole bunch of other crap, which is kind of obvious, 
And yeah, I'm hearing that Zen 5 is going to be kind of designed around efficiency, although obviously we're going to see performance increases as well. It would be very interesting to see what would happen, therefore, if NVIDIA were to get their grubby little mitts on ARM. But getting back to Intel and Intel, as in AMD, uh, so Intel CPU and GPU, it'll be a very curious thing if we end up in this really bizarro land situation where, for example, a Ryzen CPU for laptop or desktop ends up being the best combination in terms of value with an Intel GPU. And I don't know why, I just... There is this part of me, uh, I, I'm not even going to lie to you guys, like, this being real, I kind of want that to happen. And I don't know why, it just, it really just strikes a chord with me of like this bizarro reverse land. Can you imagine, like, if you went back to, let's like, say, 20, what, 2013, 2014, 2015, even 2016, and someone was to say to you, in several years' time, the best value combination is going to be an Intel GPU, and... An AMD, and an AMD, it's so hard for me to even get my mind around saying this correctly, an AMD CPU and an Intel GPU in terms of raw performance versus, you know, bang for buck. And you're going to be like, you're wrong. It's that simple. I don't care if you've come for the future. You're just plain wrong. Anyway, uh, I've kind of been rambling now, but with all that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.